March uh, called Engaging Your Employees Through Jumpstart Engagement Workshops. Um, this is actually part two uh, of a two-part webinar where we explained in part one uh, last month in February, uh, we explained what a Jumpstart Engagement Workshop was, why you need it, and I'll go through that very, very briefly uh, again today. Uh, but really what we're going to focus on in today's workshop, uh, in today's webinar, I'm sorry, is are the creative exercises that we use. Uh, a lot of times, a lot of facilitators will talk about um, being creative and how to facilitate, but they really don't usually uh, like to open their bag of tools and tricks, uh, fearing that that uh, intellectual property will then get used. Well, I have no problem with sharing mine. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to share with you today a lot of the most effective um, facilitation techniques, but mostly the creative exercises that we use in Jumpstart workshops to develop new innovative ideas to improve employee engagement, and also um, to hone those down and develop them and evaluate them and prioritize them, because just the ideas themselves is, is as you probably know, uh, just brainstorming without any focus doesn't really uh, solve many issues. So um, let's get going. Um, I will just quit the slide. Here we go. So as I said before, um, there we'll just be we'll, we'll spend most of the time today on uh, jumpstart engagement workshops. Uh, we will have a few minutes at the end for uh, some questions. Please, if you have any questions or any comments, use the chat box available uh, on the right-hand side of the screen. OK, just before we start, a couple of uh, words about Talent Map, uh, our company. We've been in business for more than 15 years. Um, and we, we basically specialize in engagement surveys. And we've done more than 7,000 of them. More than a million employees in the different companies have been surveyed. We do more than 500 uh, employee engagement surveys annually. And really, it's about having one focus. We don't do anything but employee engagement, from measurement right through to consulting, to helping our clients uh, achieve measurable improvements uh, in engagement. And not for engagement's sake, but to achieve real business results. Uh, here's a, a snapshot of uh, sort of a shotgun of uh, many of our clients that we work with on a regular basis. You can see uh, we're very strong in, especially in health sciences and healthcare and in financial services. We work with, uh, at the same time, very, very small um, community health type uh, hospitals with 50 or fewer employees, right up to some of Canada's largest and well, uh, best known brands uh, like Great West Life. Uh, or Sobeys, or Canadian Tire, or Canada Post. So uh, as I said before, um, why Jumpstart Workshops? We're really, I'll give us a, a little bit of a recap in terms of what we've talked about in, in February's presentation, just to set the context for those of you uh, who haven't been, uh, who weren't on February's uh, webinar. So where does this all begin? Well, essentially, um, we know from academic research, we know from literature, um, that um, there's a gap. Uh, and often that gap is, uh, exists when we, uh, we conduct presentations, or we have conducted presentations in the past. And uh, you all have, uh, have listened to presentations of engagement results or other results or research. Uh, and have uh, exposed your senior leadership teams to this. Uh, and then at the end of the presentation, everybody's, uh, um, you know, accepts the results uh, very well, usually. Uh, and then there's a little bit of a flurry, but very little tends to happen after that. Um, and that can get very frustrating, and especially in the field of engagement. Um, by conducting an employee engagement survey, we have basically made a promise to our staff that says, we want your opinion, and we intend to use your opinion to make improvements. But yet, just uh, with competing priorities, um, with uh, a whole other lot of distraction, we know from experience that very little gets, uh, gets done after an employee engagement survey. There is some action planning that takes place, 
but it tends to be um, it tends to be uh, thin. It tends to be haphazard. And it tends to be ad hoc. And why is this? Well, there's a there's a psychological reason for for this, and it comes down to how we as adults learn. It's not necessarily because senior managers don't have time. Uh, we uh, we know now that just merely by conducting a presentation, usually by PowerPoint uh, or other visual aid, uh, only 30% of the learning, uh, only 30% of the messages that we communicate in that presentation, no matter how good we are as presenters, only 30% of that information tends to be retained. So obviously, um, there's 70% uh, of the message that gets lost. Uh, and that obviously reduces the impetus um, to act on the results. But we also know that when we use experiential learning, um, which basically means learning by doing, that people remember uh, as much as 90% of what we see, what we hear, and we dis discuss in practice. So when people learn by doing, they're ready to do themselves. And what we do with Jumpstart Workshops, essentially, it's a uh, it, it, we take the presentation and we use uh, experiential learning to have managers um, use different senses and learn by doing. Uh, and then we create a number of exercises around that um, so that we essentially augment the creativity um, in the normal action planning process. So that's essentially um, why we do Jumpstart Engagement workshops. What are they really? Um, we started doing what we called, we coined the phrase jumpstart engagement essentially because we wanted to take uh, the learning from uh, our presentations, our research, and jumpstart the action planning process. And what we do is we apply techniques from the product innovation world uh, to stimulate and improve uh, the action plan. So. Um, what a Jumpstart workshop is essentially is it's a one-day interactive workshop that focuses on uh, developing creative solutions uh, and actions to some of the most important engagement issues. It tends to be high energy. It's fun. But I caution folks, it's, it's not fun for fun's sake. And I, I know when I go into a lot of workshops, a lot of focus groups, and talking to employees, as soon as you say stuff like team building or a workshop, or action planning, you can see the eyes rolling. You can see the heavy. You can hear the heavy sighs, and people are thinking, "Oh my God, what a, you know, um, what kind of silly games are they going to put us through?" Um, to be creative, we have to have we have to loosen the mind. We have to make people feel very comfortable. Um, so we use uh, exercises that involve mobility. We use exercises that involve different senses, which I'll talk about a little bit later, and that often tends to have a side effect called fun. So we're not just having fun for fun's sake. It's really the means to an end, which is to be more creative. Uh, what Jumpstart Engagement Workshops uh, result in, what's the outcome? Well, we've seen, uh, we've, we, we essentially uh, have as few as 35 to 50, but as many as 75 to 100 different action ideas uh, as to how to improve engagement that result from conducting one of these workshops. And we, through a prioritization and convergence process uh, that, we, that we do through the workshop, we develop between 8 and 12 uh, solid action plans from some of these good ideas. Um, so you walk out of a Jumpstart Engagement Workshop with a ton of ideas. Um, that you can use for future, but really about a dozen solid action plans, fully fleshed out action plans that are ready for what I call Monday morning implementation. Uh, Jumpstart Engagement Workshop typically has around 20 to 25 people in it. Um, it's a cross cut of employees. What we usually call diagonal. So uh, if you look at a uh, uh, an organization horizontally and vertically, so you have different layers of management and frontline employees, but you also have a horizontal representation from across the organization. Sometimes we counsel to avoid direct reports of supervisors in the same room. That depends on the culture of the organization. Some can be uh, can work very well together. Others, uh, it's a little more, more dicey. The key is, here is to ensure 
that everybody in the room can speak freely, uh, and to ensure that there's representation from the decision-making body of the organization. Otherwise, um, the the action items, the action plans, uh, won't necessarily get picked up uh, and have senior management support. On the talent map side, uh, you can do this yourselves, but we usually have a professional facilitator, which uh, usually is myself, uh, and also one of the project project managers, or in your case, the person or the, the HR person who's probably closest to the engagement results or participate. So now what I'm going to do essentially is talk you through a lot of the different exercises. Uh, I've brushed over the, the basics of a Jumpstart Engagement Workshop. If anybody wants more background on that, please uh, send us a, an email, and we'll be more than happy to share that, uh, that presentation from last month with you if you feel a little bit lost now. So essentially, what we're doing here with, uh, with these exercises are we're, either, we're expanding the, the different thought centers and senses. So rather than in a presentation where you would use simply verbal, visual, and auditory, we expand that. We expand that primarily into the kinesthetic, which basically means movement, and we expand that into tactile, which basically means touching. So if you can imagine spatial as well as script, and script most often takes the form of drawing in the exercises that we're going to be doing. So we want people to move, we want people to touch and feel, we want people to draw in addition to speaking, listening, and hearing. The olfactory one is a little bit sensitive. We don't go too much down the smell side <laughs> for obvious reasons. So it's a little bit hard to control. So let's talk about exercises. Um, there's three types uh, of exercises that we use uh, in Jumpstart workshops. The first type is energizers. The second type. Um, are called divergence, and the third uh, are convergence. Now, uh, energizers are just what they say. Essentially, what a good facilitator needs to do during one of these exercises or during the, one of these sessions to maintain and to augment creativity and new idea creation is we need to control very, very carefully the level of energy in the room. Sometimes that means raising energy levels. Other times, it actually means calming the room down. Um, but what, what we need to do is we need to ensure very, very high energy during creative uh, development or idea generation sessions part of the day. And we also need to temper, usually temper down the level of energy when we're talking about idea evaluation or convergence. All right, so I'm just going to talk to a couple of my favorite techniques. Um, first, of, before I do that, first. Uh, a couple of uh, things around you know what the right energy level happens to be and how to how do we enhance energy um, and those of you who've attended a lot of workshops sort of take this stuff for granted uh, as part of the day but there's usually if, if the facilitator is worth uh, worth their salt there's always the method to the madness so energy enhancers uh, obviously breaks the energy uh, the uh, energizer type exercises I'll take you through in a minute. Movement, exercise, getting me, just pe having people stand up to do things instead of sitting at tables. Um, uh, food uh, is a great energizer. Um, and typically, as we all know, our energy levels in mid-afternoon around 3 o'clock tend to wane. Um, a bowl of candy on the, di on the table uh, is a, a very devious way uh, just to get that energy level back up. Um, not necessarily the, the most uh, uh, best use of calories, but that's a different story. That's what we're trying to do is create the energy, at least on a temporary basis. So moving around, energy drainers, having people sit and watch presentations. We all know that. Um, divergent discussion, um, lengthy group presentations. So those, those you know, the presentations of the, of the flip chart after the breakout group that tend to go on and on and on those tend to drain a lot of energy. Facilitators have to be very, very conscious of that. All right. So as I said before, a couple of uh, my favorite energizer exercise. The first one is simple. Is we call it red ball thank you. And you don't have to actually have balls in the room uh, to do this or colored balls. You may, you may not. Uh, oftentimes, I just do it fictitiously. And we, we start by getting everybody to stand up. We, 
we usually form a, a large circle um, if the room size permits. And if it doesn't, we have people do this around their work tables. Uh, and the first one starts off by uh, throwing a ball and saying, or a fictitious ball and saying red ball, uh, and making eye contact with someone. And that someone has to repeat red ball, thank you. And then that, that person continues, says red ball, and the per they look at someone else. And the other one pretends to catch it, and they say red ball, thank you. And then as that keeps going, you introduce green ball, and then you introduce blue ball. Uh, and what that's doing is it's making people think, they're focusing, they're sharpening the mind, they have to keep alert. And it's that alertness, um, essentially, in doing that exercise, which re-energizes um, or energizes the mind. And typically, these things, oh, they, obviously, they happen to be quite a bit of fun as well. But again, it's not just fun for fun's sake. What happens is you'll know if this has worked, if you get that little buzz at the end of the room with everybody sort of chattering that, and you get the background noise. You know at that point that your exercise has been successful. And the energy of the room now has moved up to a point where you can introduce a creative exercise. Uh, another one, a quick one, um, often we use it for grouping as well. Um, and when you know your audience isn't exactly up for pretending to throw balls, uh, we can just basically have two sides of a room, and we get people to go to the side of the room that um, that meets, uh, that they fall into. So city or country, beach or mountain, left hand, right hand, half empty, half full, that type of thing. We usually use the number that are more um, relevant to the audience at hand. So uh, these could be any sort of dichotomy. All this is doing is it's getting people up. It's getting people to move around. It's getting people to chat. Um, and then we can use that uh, we either to have people number off and group them into different tables or whatever. But the objective of this really is simply to get people out of their seats, to get them moving. And by doing so, um, you essentially augment the energy in the room. So that's just a couple uh, of quick energizers. Of course, there's many, many, many more. You've probably experienced a number of them if you've gone to uh, conferences or uh, facilitated workshops or things like that. But none, the, the key here really is the importance of maintaining high energy when you need high energy uh, and low en lower energy when you need lower energy. So if you've ever tried to create or develop new ideas with people sitting around a table who just listened to a lengthy presentation, it's not going to happen. You need to introduce these exercises. All right. The second category of exercises is called divergence. Now, divergence is a critical part of a jumpstart workshop. What divergence is, essentially, is we diverge uh, in a number of ways by, A, creating or working in smaller subgroups. Uh, I've seen, and you might know them as breakout groups, but that's a little bit of a misnomer. Uh, the small groups shouldn't be more than three, four, at the absolute maximum, five people. What you want a group is, is, is a, the group has to be small enough so nobody can quote unquote hide. And that hiding is just essentially you're in, an introvert who doesn't want to, or for whatever reason doesn't feel they can participate actively. If there's another, if there's a critical mass of other people in the group doing the talking, they will, uh, uh, they will retract. In a group of three or four, that usually can't happen. The group is too small. And so divergence is breaking out into a, sm a number of smaller groups. Creativity happens in small groups. It does not happen in a big group. And I'm sure you, you might have experienced it. Divergence also represents or, or is the creative development part of the process. This is where the ideas are generated. Uh, and um, now I'll go through a number of exercises um, that, um, that 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 will help you do that. But before I do, I think I need to focus uh, on output. Remember, uh, just like fun uh, is not intended for fun's sake, these creative exercises, a lot of times, and many facilitators and many participants can get lost in the exercise itself and lose sight of what we're trying to do. And what we're trying to do here, essentially, is three things. We want to understand the nature of the engagement issue at hand. So if we're talking about a teamwork issue, or a professional growth issue, or a senior management, or immediate management leadership issue, 
the um, the issue has to uh, the the exercise has to allow for that understanding of the issue, and we also have to allow for exploration uh, of the issue. So the first part of any creative exercise is simply articulation of the issue, usually in written down format. It's best if you use paper and handouts for this type of thing, um, and then exploration. So. Uh, we need to at least give 10 or 15 minutes uh, at the beginning of this exercise to allow people to explore what the issue is, to understand or develop and, and ponder root causes, to interact with whatever stimulus we're going to be showing them, uh, and to get comfortable. Um, you know, essentially, uh, I often tried with uh, when we do some of our clients. Um, uh, in the Bay Street area in Toronto, in the financial sector, uh, we it tends to be one of those sectors that's still pretty dapper in terms of wearing suits and ties. Well, comfortable, uh, comfort is key here, so we basically have to get people to to, to loosen up a little bit. So that's just one uh, one way of doing that. But whatever makes people comfortable in that sense. Uh, but most importantly, in these creative exercises, it's all about the idea. Uh, it's it's we need to essentially make these groups accountable, not for just talking about the issue, but the ideas have to be have to flow and have to generate. So the objective of each of these creative exercises is the output: two or three engagement action ideas per exercise. And as a facilitator, we keep harping on that. We basically make sure, okay, you know, enjoy the moment, enjoy the fun, but it's all about the idea, folks. Get those ideas out. Um, and how do we do that? Well, that's coming up. Um, the key tool uh, is called an action idea card. Uh, it's a simple card, just like you see in front of you on the screen. We hand out, we print off at least a hundred of these going into a jumpstart engagement workshop. And it's simply, it simply it provides the opportunity. So as someone comes up with an idea, which is a resolution to the issue that they're discussing. They write it down. They have to write it down, not on a flip chart, not on a piece of paper, uh, not on a post-it note, but on one of these prep prepared cards. Simply stated, it's what the idea is, the working name, uh, what does it focus on, uh, how will it achieve higher employee engagement, maybe a little quick drawing, some of the primary benefits. We we stress it's, uh, it's just about getting a, a quick recording down. Uh, and as the, the, this, the creative exercise is coming to a close, there's a lot of uh, there, there's a lot of emphasis put on these. And as they fill out these cards, and they don't need to write novels; it's just a quick couple of quick notes, enough for anybody looking at it to understand what they mean by the idea. They post these idea cards up on a wall. And so, as you can see, if you've got let's say 25 people divided into six groups, and each of these groups is developing two, three, potentially four ideas per exercise, you can see how that multiplies pretty quickly in getting the numbers that I was talking about. So anywhere between 50 and 100 uh, different ideas that are generated. Okay, So let's talk about the specific exercise. So how do we actually make people creative? Well, one of the exercises that I like to use quite a bit um, is called Paper Dolls. And I'll tell you what Paper Dolls does, first of all. Um, before I explain the, the actual technique. A paper doll is what's called a projective technique. So an, one of the key issues that we have in developing action plans around employee engagement is if you sit a group of people around a table um, and you, actually, uh, you know, ask them to articulate the issue, let's say it's an issue around teamwork, uh, and the person is, might be feeling, well, you know, I. I, I like to be part of teams, but uh, we don't we usually get credit. Uh, you know, somebody else takes the credit, and I don't get recognized. Uh, they might be thinking that, but if they articulate that, then uh, it's a, sen a little bit of an antisocial sentiment. So there's a fear of retribution. How will people think about me? How will my peers think about me? Will I think I'm selfish? That kind of thing. What Paper Doll does is it provides an outlet. So people can project these thoughts on a fictitious employee. So what the what actually happens in the exercise is we we pile a bunch of old magazines, usually fashion magazines, because 
those are the ones that have the most facial images uh, in them, um, which are conducive to this type of creative thinking. Um, and we ask them a number of questions to, about uh, an individual uh, or an issue around teamwork, in this case, in this example. So, but it goes beyond that. What we want to do is we want to have people um, articulate very in, in great depth what they think this person is thinking, uh, what they think this person is feeling around teamwork. Of course, because it's a fictitious person, they have to make it up. Where do they make it up? They project their own thoughts and feelings onto the paper doll. The paper doll itself is, uh, rather than people talking about it, they actually cut and paste. We give them scissors, we give them glue sticks, and they cut and paste and create images around who this person is in a lot of detail. And we provide the questions, as you can see, uh, around that, just some of the things that talk about what their personality is like in the workplace, what the issues are, um, and of course, uh, you know, how they feel about the issue in particular in teamwork. So as we debrief this exercise, people get into a very a lot of detail around this individual uh, fictitious person that they've created, uh, and then they get into the issues that they've been thinking but never articulate. And as they articulate those issues, then we bring the action idea cards up, and we say, OK, write down an idea, write down a second idea, how do we solve this person's issue? Uh, Joe employee or Joe manager specific needs uh, are now up there. How do we, what are the ideas that you come up with to, to, to resolve those? Um, and because A, they're having fun, B, they're, they're moving around, they're doing this thing, um, the creativity and the creative juices are flowing, they feel relaxed, um, and because they're not talking about themselves, they're talking about Joe employee uh, or Joe manager, um, the ideas tend to flow uh, pretty well. And then the, act, the action idea cards start to self-populate. Um, so that's just one example, paper doll. Here's a couple of examples of what the output looks like, you see. So um, in this case, I think that one of these is actually a marketing example. The other one's a, um, uh, an employee engagement example around uh, around work-life balance and uh, and moms and things like that, but you can see very people get very articulate uh, about these uh, about these people, uh, and then with that articulation comes the creativity that they that they now inject into the action idea card. Um, a second exercise, a little bit similar, but maybe a bit different approach, is to use a game board. We call a day in the life, uh, and then they populate the game board within, uh, in each of these squares, simpler types of questions. So, um, you know, morning routines, what concerns, how they spend my time, what they value, what influences, my attitude on life. So we're getting way beyond the work life here. Uh, and then we bring that into questions like, how do I balance work and personal time? How do I deal with stress? How is my health affected by work? What is the role of coworkers? And all these thought starters begin now, and then we start to, to make the questions more granular. Of course, they're written down, and people are filling this in with pictures or words or drawing um, around, uh, around the employee engagement issue uh, at hand. In this particular one, uh, it really was around work-life balance um, and w how we can come up with creative solutions to improve one's sense of control over work in a very high stress environment. Okay? Um, one of these one of the exercises is a little bit different now, we're not talking about projective technique anymore, um, is borrowing inspiration. And this is so simple uh, yet so effective. And essentially what it boils down to is we begin what a lot of times people get log jammed, especially when we're talking about employee engagement issues because they don't know uh, how things are done elsewhere. All they know is what, how things are done around them. So we put a, a variety of images of different organizations in the same sphere of influence. So if it's, if, uh, if it's financial sector, we'll put different logos well, of their company versus other companies. Uh, if it's government or public sector, we'll put in different departments 
areas and logos of things like that. And then we'll ask people to create the same. Uh, and what we're looking for here is um, we want just to th have them think of examples um, of experiences in their daily lives where they have um, experience where somebody, some organization they know does something very well. Uh, and if, for example, if we're talking about a pro professional growth or, or uh, let's talk about one I did yesterday, around work environment. Well, around work environment, we ask people, OK, come up with a number of images about the best companies or organizations you know that have the most inspiring work environments. And inevitably, a lot of the Silicon Valley type organizations came up, Google, Apple, Microsoft, um, uh, Dell, Intel, things like that. And then, well, why is that? What do these companies do? Well, they have open collaborative areas. They have sandbag chairs. They have closed offices where but they can meet for collaboration. So, and then we apply that those types of ideas to uh, our organization. What can we do here? Um, and then, of course, the idea cards start to flow, and we have new ideas in terms of uh, in terms of work environment. So that's just uh, another divergent type of exercise. Storyboarding is a fourth one, and now storyboarding essentially is thinking about. This is usually uh, when we're talking about work processes. Um, so we have people draw as opposed to talk or listen or look. Um, a storyboard. And in st a storyboard comes from uh, when advertisers are creating ads, they create first a storyboard where they just basically sketch out what's happening box by box in the story. But in this case, what we want to do is we have people step, we, we, we start by sketching out what they think the, the issue is right now. So let's say if we're talking about um, uh, let's say pro professional career growth. Uh, professional growth can, can sometimes be uh, an issue. And training, we don't have, we don't have uh, sufficient training. Uh, often comes as an issue. Um, so we have them draw something that depicts that at the beginning, and then without uh, with, without th overthinking the process, now we have them draw what the end state. Well, okay, okay, do a drawing of what in your perfect world or four, four or five years from now, what it would look like, what the employee would look like if this, were, if this issue were resolved. And then with the end state drawing in place, of course, this is all sketch and stick drawing, and we're not talking uh, great art here. Uh, but then we, they have, we, we get them to fill in frame by frame what's going on. And then as they're filling in this, these frames, Using uh, using drawings, the ideas start to flow, and then the action cards come out, and we make sure uh, that the ideas start to flow in that. And just by putting pen or marker to flip chart in this case, uh, that generates the ideas, then they which they then can articulate in those action idea cards. So that's just uh, I've just talked to you about three or four different types of divergent exercises. There's literally hundreds. Uh, this isn't rocket science, by the way. You can uh, go look many of these exercises up on the internet just by Googling something called divergent exercises or creative uh, exercises, and you, you'll, see, see, you'll see many, many, many more. Now, turning uh, to the second part. Now, all these great ideas, imagine we have about 50, 60, 70, 80, 80 idea cards up on the wall. Okay, well, what do we do with all this? I mean, that's that. Where where do we start in terms of turning some of those ideas into concrete actions we can use to improve engagement? Um, and this is where convergence comes in. Um, so convergence uh, is essentially the the process by which we take many many ideas and we I isolate the best ones and then develop them uh, into full blown action plans. Um, so. Okay, so uh, essentially what we want to do is um, we first of all have to inform the participants that we're leaving the sort of the creative divergent space uh, and then we're going into convergence. Now, the first step in doing that is essentially to 
to work with the group or to use a number of commonly accepted criteria uh, by which you will evaluate the ideas. Uh, and usually, they boil down to which, one, which ideas uh, are going to have the biggest bang for your employee engagement buck, so which are going to be the most effective, um, and then which are feasible, uh, which do we have budget for or don't have budget for, which will senior management accept. And those are four usual uh, convergence criteria. Uh, we put those up on a board or on the screen somewhere. The second is to prioritize the ideas. Uh, and I'll show you the exercise, my favorite exercise, to do that in a second. Um, and then we divide and conquer, which essentially is with the ideas that we prioritize, we distribute those back out into, uh, into a little bit larger groups than, this than the divergent section. Uh, and then those, imp those groups then work on the best ideas, strengthen them, evaluate them, uh, and work them into uh, action plans. So first step, prioritize. Um, I'm sure many of you uh, have been in long-winded, uh, very long discussions about uh, you have a number of different things and you have to select priorities for, and everybody's going to make the pitch for why their group's idea is the best. and uh, we rarely ever get to any sort of consensus around that because uh, we don't want to hurt feelings and yada, yada, yada. We skip around that. We can get very, uh, a very good group priority very easily. And the way we do that, essentially, is we usually distribute sticky dots um, to the audience or to the participants. Um, yeah. And then um, those sticky dots are three colors. And people put their highest, second highest, third highest priority uh, without talking. So everybody goes up to the board, to the idea cards. They put their sticky dots on there. And then visually, you can see instantaneously how the group uh, views the priorities. And you select uh, anywhere between 10 and 12 of the highest priority items. So that's, that's getting to the priorities. And then what we do is with those 8 or 10, we distribute those to the groups, essentially, that uh, came up with the ideas. Um, and we have them go through an exercise called PPCO, Plus Potential Concern and Overcome Concern, where they really dissect the idea. Uh, what's good about it? What potential does it have? Now, most importantly, OK, uh, every idea is going to have some roadblocks uh, in terms of getting implemented. So what are the concerns? Uh, but Equally important is how do we overcome those concerns? What are the what are the ways that we can solve this problem? And if we can't get over that, is the idea really worth doing? And then we sometimes go back to the wall, select a new one. So quickly, uh, that's what PPCO is. And that basically, uh, when you've done that eight or twelve times, you come out with your your uh, your action plan. Um, in 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 pretty minute detail. Uh, we attach accountabilities to that. We attach timelines to that. Uh, and we have ideas that have now germinated uh, and been developed into action items, uh, action plans. And usually, the ideas are pretty innovative. There's stuff that haven't been thought before. Or if they have been thought before, uh, there's solutions in terms of how do we actually get Im implemented. So that's all I have on, uh, on, on Jumpstart and some of the um, some of the exercises that we use. We apologize for the technical difficulties um, in, in, in incurred at the beginning of the session. I hope that we've got our at least 30% of our message across, as I uh, explained before. Uh, next month, what we're going to be doing uh, is we're going to talk about um, some of the thorny issues in engagement and how we improve uh, on these. So uh, next month, we'll deal with organizational vision. Uh, and we'll show you um, how we run visioning and business planning workshops to ensure employees feel included and buy into a vision and how that vision can be communicated uh, effectively. So uh, uh, on that, go ahead, Sean. Yeah, so, so uh, maybe what I'll d jump in. I know we just have a, a couple of minutes uh, left. There, there is a, a one question that actually came up by, by a couple of uh, people. Uh, you may have covered it off, but it'd probably be good to to just reinforce. And the question uh, that did come up uh, throughout the session, Norm, um, 
was around uh, how many people or how many employees, managers, whatever, would you typically have in one of these uh, workshops? Okay, um, good question, thank you. Um, ideally, we're, we probably around, have around 25, uh, but I've done sessions as many as 40. Getting beyond 40 gets a little bit unwieldy, uh, as you can probably imagine. Uh, minimum, on the minimum, you probably need at least around 15. Um, and then uh, with that, with those 15, uh, you can't usually do quite as many issues because divide and conquer is one of the key uh, assumptions going on. So the more people and the more breakout groups that we can have, the more different issues that we can deal with. Good. Oh, that's great. Okay. And the other, uh, the other thing, Norm, I do want to uh, thank you for for walking through this. This is very interesting. Uh, looks like you have a wealth of. Uh, of uh, concepts and ideas and tools that you can pull out based on the audience, based on the requirements, based on the type of people you have in the room, whether or not they come from more of a, depending on the industry I guess they come uh, from, they'll apply or you'll apply different tools and, and different facilitation techniques. But, but I thought it was really interesting to be able to pull some of the market research practices that's really been used and perfected for many years and, and really a lot of invested in there trying to understand how, to, how do we get to the psychology of the buyer or the consumer and taking some of those pra practice and techniques and applying it to the employee side of the business. So, so thanks for that. that was, uh, I think that was very interesting. And uh, hopefully uh, for those who were be able to get through the audio technical problem we had at the beginning, uh, we're able to get some value out of the process and uh, hopefully have an opportunity to join us in the future. And as Norm mentioned, uh, we do have some upcoming events. We're out in Calgary uh, in a couple of weeks in April. And we're here in Ottawa talking American Society of Quality on Employee Engagement for Quality and, of course, at the HR Municipal HR Association in the fall as well as other events coming up. So thank you very much for attending. And there will be a recording of this, so if you did miss it or would like to hear it again or learn, uh, listen to parts of it, uh, it will be posted on our website in just a couple of days. So thank you, Norm. Thank you, Sean. Okay. Bye-bye. To contact us, or to learn more, just Google Talent Map, or simply click on the link below.